know that you were created to worship him this morning, that the breath that you breathe, you breathe it because he gave it to you. We are knowing, we are loving, we are serving, and we're reaching. Well, good morning, everyone. I hope that you had a fantastic Christmas. Thanks for tuning in with us uh, on the holiday weekend. Uh, we're excited. We're excited to uh, enter into a new year. We're excited for the week that's ahead. Um, and uh, we're going to close the chapter on 2020. And we're going to go ahead and open the chapter on 2021. As in just a few days, the, the ball will drop and we will uh, we'll usher in uh, a very expected new year. Uh, we know one thing for sure. 2020 has taught us that we have no idea what the future holds. No clue. When we started 2020, we had no idea of all of the things that we would learn and endure and change and adapt. Uh, all of our hopes and plans and dreams and all of our, our goals, our New Year's resolutions, the, the things that we wrote in our planner, all of those things quickly went out the window in March as we transitioned and got out of our comfort zones. We realized that we're not guaranteed to see any of those things happen the way that we think they're going to happen. In 2020, I had no idea the value of toilet paper, right? Like I think back to my days as a youth pastor, every single game had a roll of toilet paper uh, as part of the game. Or I feel like I'm going to tell my kids one day that, you know, back in my day, we used to take toilet paper and throw it up in the trees. Uh, now I'm telling them, you know, how many squares they can use before dad can make it down to the public. So it's just one of those things where we find ourselves adapting and changing and, and we just never know what's in store. 2020 also taught us a lot of valuable things. It taught us to focus on what matters the most. In 2020, our focus shifted to things like family and friends. And ultimately, it drew us back to our faith in ways that it has never drawn us to our faith before. When we found ourselves holding on to what we knew to be true, it drew us back to the presence of the Father. Uh, above all, 2020 has taught me this. I want to make an impact for the kingdom now. I don't wanna wait until later. I don't wanna put it off until later. I want every single day to make an impact for his kingdom. With all my days, with every breath that I have, I wanna make an, an impact for the kingdom of God. To make an impact for the kingdom of God, I think something very significant has to happen. We have to get out of the box if we're going to make an impact for the kingdom. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we live by faith and not by sight. We've got to begin to adapt. See, when we live inside the box, we do things that feel safe and, and inside the box or where things are known and inside the box, we feel more comfortable. We feel like maybe we have more control when we find ourselves living inside the box. Inside the box, things are done the way we like things done. Outside the box, that looks a little scary. Outside the box is where the unpredictable lives. Outside the box is where the unknown is. It's, it's change. It's not the way things have always been. And if we want to make an impact for the kingdom, well, then we have to get out of our comfort zone. And ultimately, we have to get out of the box. We got to be willing to try something new. We've got to be willing to let go of the way things always were and begin embracing the way that things are now. If we make a, a difference, and if we want to make an impact, then we have to essentially get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And nobody really likes to be uncomfortable, but that's where change happens. That's where the kingdom is going to be uh, seen. 
I want to look in Genesis 12.1. Back, back in the beginning, we're going to talk about uh, a promise and, and some expectation that God had for somebody very significant who he asked to get out of his comfort zone, to get out of the box. It says, The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, from your people, and your father's household to the land that I'm going to show you. I will make it into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those, uh, who, and I will curse those for whoever curses you. All the people of the earth, he says, I'm going to bless through you. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was already 75 years old when he set out from Haran. So God says, listen, here's what you need to do to follow me and to make an impact, to go where I'm asking you to go. I need you to leave your country, leave your people, leave your father's house, leave all these things that you know and follow me. Leave all of the things that you've built up, all of the things that you know well, and start following the way that I am asking you to go. He said, I'm asking you to get out of your box. I'm asking you to get uncomfortable. And Abram does it. Abram Abram doesn't question, he just does it. He goes where God leads. Listen, all of us have dreams and desires and hopes. We all want to make an impact. None of us would tune in this morning, the Sunday between Christmas and New Year's, if we didn't have a desire to make an impact for his kingdom. And we may have dreams and hopes to make a desire. There are a lot of dreamers out there. But dreams happen in the box. Doing happens outside of the box. It's one thing to have dreams and hopes and wants for a great impact in the kingdom, but at some point we have to get outside of the box. There's a lot of dreamers, but there's not a lot of doers. Most of the time we don't get out of the box because we just don't like to fail. Who likes to fail? No one really enjoys failing. Instead, we just settle. We settle with things being just okay. I asked for a a present for Christmas, and I actually got what I asked for. I saw this uh, sweatshirt online that says, the world's okayest golfer. And uh, thankfully, Stephanie got me the sweatshirt, and and I love it because here's the deal. I am the world's okayest golfer. I'm not great. Every time I head out to the course, my score is relatively the same, probably because I'm afraid to fail. See, if I wanted to get better, then I would have to take some risks. I'd have to enroll in some lessons. I would have to uh, financially pay to play a whole lot more. I would have to make some big investments, and I'd have to get out of my comfort zone if I wanted to see improvement. So I just settle with being the world's okayest golfer. Some of us are not willing to get outside of our box, and we're settling for being the okayest at life. The okayest when it comes to being a follower of Jesus. Instead of settling, we have to get outside the box. We've got to become doers and not just dreamers. When we decide to step out of the box, there are a few things that happen. Just a couple things I want to run through this morning. The first thing is this. We need to expect difficulty when we get out of the box. Look, when you jump out of the box, everything is not going to be great and grand. There are going to be things that we endure that aren't what we expected, and maybe they're not even very pleasant. In Genesis 12, 10, it says, now there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to live uh, there for a while because the, the famine was severe. Basically, God told him where to go, and right where he told him to go, there was a famine. I mean, he jumps out of the box and he's greeted with this, ex, this difficulty right off the bat. But the difficulty doesn't stop him. He, he, he decides that, that everything that he needs to do needs to happen. Difficulties are no difficulties. So when you and I get out of the box, we should go ahead and expect things are going to go wrong. Things aren't going to feel as safe as they are inside the box. The question is, when things get difficult, what will you do? Will you continue to push through and live life outside the box? Or will you retreat back to the box where it's comfortable and and you kind of know the ways of the ins and the outs and and where you're going to go? Abram pressed forward when he experienced difficulties. Next thing is this. We need to remember 
what God can do. Romans 4.17 is talking about this same story. It says, As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God and him who believed. The God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. See, he's basically saying a couple of things. Two things. God can do what we can't do. He's God and we're not. God brings life to something that is already dead. God can breathe life into something that we already think is gone and over and dead. Maybe it's a, a dream or a relationship, maybe even in a, a dead bank account, right? God can bless and do things that are so far-fetched that we can't understand because he can breathe life into things that we think are already gone. God can take something and he can make it new all over again. God can make something where there seems to be no way, right? We've heard that before, but that continues to be true. He can show us something when we see nothing. That's what God can do. That's what faith and jumping out of the box and living this life looks like is realizing that he can do far more than what we could ever do on our own. Two, he, uh, he calls things into being that we're not. You know, he basically says, I know that, that there seems to be no way that this could happen. There's no plan for this to happen. But if you'll follow me, I can make that way. I can make that something out of nothing for you. Number three is this. Face facts with faith. Romans 4, 19 through 20 says, Without weakening his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. Since he was about 100 years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through this unbelief regarding the promise of God, but he was actually strengthened in his faith and he gave glory to God. Look, <laughs> Abram looked at the reality of the situation. He looked at the facts that he was presented with and he said, yeah, there's no way that this works. I mean, I'm a hundred years old and my wife, well, she's old too. There's no way that this should be possible. There's no way that I should be able to be the, the father of this nation. It's, it's not logical to be able to happen that way. Everything about this situation is completely impossible possible. But then it says, his faith didn't waver. It actually was stronger. Abram knew that it looked like this impossible situation could still be possible because it was God that called him out of the box. Anything is possible with God. Anything. Any, any dream that you have, any direction that you feel this tug towards, no matter how wild or far-fetched it is, it can be possible if it's God that's leading and directing. Faith is interesting because we often uh, rely on our faith to guide us. This faith in things that uh, are there that we can't see. But faith is not denying the problem at hand. Faith is not ignoring the problems that are there. Faith is embracing the problems, not ignoring the facts, but trusting that God can overcome anything that we face. Number four is this. We need to rely on what God has said when the doubt creeps in. Genesis 15, three through five says, Abram said, you have given me no children. So a servant in my household will have to be their heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir but a son who is of your own flesh and blood will be your heir. God took him outside and he said, look up at the sky, count the stars. Indeed, if you can count them. Then he said, so shall your offspring be. When doubts begin to come in, because inevitably we're going to have doubts on this road outside the box, as the difficulties come and when things don't make sense, there's going to be a point where doubt begins to creep in. Like, is this really what I'm supposed to be doing? 
The conversation that's had in this passage right here is actually had 10 years after the initial promise from God. For 10 years, he's been saying, okay, I'll go. I'll jump out of the box. I'll do whatever you ask me to go do. And for 10 years, he continued to wait until this point where this doubt begins to creep in. And it was in that moment that the doubt crept in that he was really saying, is this what I'm supposed to do? Did I hear you right? A life of faith is never free of doubt. It's not. Often we have grown up in the church with this idea that we're not allowed to ask questions. That if we ask questions, then it shows a weakness in our faith, especially when it comes to things that uh, have to do with with, uh, the church and direction and, and those type of things. But having questions is not an absence of faith. Questions actually strengthen our faith. When we have that conversation with God and we allow the faith to be this process, it's the questions that drive the process forward. I really love this last passage. I love this idea of God, you know, essentially taking his arm and putting it around Abram and leading him outdoors to look up at all the stars. And he says, hey, do you see these? Can you count all those? He knows that he can't count all those. Only God can because he's the one that put them there. But he looks up and he says, I want you to see my promise is still true. Just as each one of those stars is in the sky, that's how many people you will be the father of. What he's trying to say in this moment is trust me. Keep the faith. Remember that I'm God and you're not. I ask you to step out of the box. I ask you to step in this faith and I'm going to see it all the way through. God essentially was saying in this moment, I'm not going to let you down because I'm also faithful to you. We spend a lot of time unpacking and discovering how we can be faithful to God. But on the flip side, we serve a father who is also faithful to to us when we're faithful to him. God has been there through it all. God has has shown me that he's God and I'm not. This past year, it's been a doozy. <laughs> it's been difficult and it's been, it, it's been tough. And one of the things that 2020 has forced all of us to do is to get out of our comfort zone. 2020 made us do things that we didn't want to do. It made us do things that we were uncomfortable with. But as we approach 2021, I wonder what it will look like if we don't live a life that's forced into an uncomfortable state or forced out of the box. But what if we voluntarily step out of the box to follow where God's leading us? The truth is things have changed things look different. And if we want to make an impact for the kingdom, we have to be willing to change too. We have to be willing to live outside of the box, to look at things from a different perspective, to be willing to let things go just because they were the way we always used to do them. It's time to allow these big dreams to become things that we do because we're voluntarily taking a step out of the box and saying, God, if you're leading me this way, I'll go. No matter the difficulties, no matter uh, the doubts, no matter the test of faith, I'm going to be faithful to you because you're faithful to me. And that's going to lead us into great things in the days ahead. Great opportunities for Concord Community Church to make an impact in his kingdom this year. So let's not get stuck in the way things have always been. Let's uh, lean into him. Trust have faith, follow, and allow him to reveal what's next for us. Look, I'm, I'm ready to see the impact that can be made. I'm ready to see what we can do in the year ahead. Last year was a year of reaction. It was a year of waiting and wondering because we didn't have all the facts. Now we know that life looks different. Now we know what needs to be done. And now is our opportunity to forge ahead. 
to step out of the box voluntarily and to go where he leads. I hope you have a very happy new year. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Did everybody have a great Christmas? I knew that we would be spending time with family this week, and I probably wouldn't get any mail. So instead of letters to Pastor Dustin, I thought I would bring you a couple riddles to start our time together today. So I'm going to read you a riddle and give you and your family time to answer. If you know the answer, don't wait. Just shout it out. Riddle number one, are you ready? What can fly without wings? I'm going to ask it again so you heard it. What can fly without wings? Hmm. What can fly without wings? The answer is time. That was pretty good. Let's see if you can guess my next riddle. Hard at work, day and night... It counts the numbers over and over. Although it counts all its life, it never gets past 12. This one's a little tricky, so I'm going to read it again. Are you ready? Hard at work, day and night, it counts the numbers over and over. Although it counts all its life, it never gets past 12. Anybody know what it is? 
The answer is a clock. That was a little bit harder, but I'm really going to try to stump you on this one. So you may need your parents' help. Who knows? We're going to see who knows this one the most. Are you ready? I never was, but always will be. No one ever saw me, but everyone knows I exist. I give people the motivation to better themselves every day. What am I? I'll say it one more time. I never was, but always will be. No one ever saw me, but everyone knows I exist. I give people the motivation to better themselves every day. What am I? I'll wait a second. Do you know what that is? The answer is tomorrow. Tomorrow. Who got it right? I'm looking. I'm looking. Anybody out there get it right? Tomorrow? Today, I want to talk to you about time. I mean, it's the perfect time to talk about time. This week, we leave 2020 behind. Whew! Wow! 2020 has been a doozy. And we start a new year, 2021. What do we use every day to help us with time? Some of us wear a watch or have a clock on our phone or on our computer. Some of us have a daily agenda to make the most of our day. Some of us have calendars to mark out what we have to do tomorrow and next week. I don't know about you, but this year I have thought a lot about time. I have wondered how long this will last. I have watched the days and counted weeks. And just recently, as JC had a birthday, I have wondered how fast time might fly. I have been thinking a lot about you this week. Yeah, you. I've been praying about how to best be your pastor during these days, weeks, and months that we haven't been able to be around each other. I was talking to Miss Sarah about it this week when she showed me the perfect verse to share with you guys this week. This verse is found in Psalm 31, verses 14, and the beginning of verse 15. Listen to this verse that I think is a perfect verse for us to start a brand new year. This is what it says. But I trust in you, Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hands. I want to read it again because that's a really important verse. It says, but I trust in you, Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hands. As we arrive at the end of another year and look forward to a new one, I want to remind you of something huge. Are you listening and ready? God knows our past, our present, and our future. He knows what's coming next week and next month. And because he knows our time, and as David put it, our time is in his hands, we should join David in a prayer today telling God that we trust him also. So I just want to pray with you. I want to pray with you about all of this last year, and I want to pray with you anticipation for this next year. I want to tell God that we trust him, and I want to ask him to give us an amazing 2021. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for this day. We weren't promised this day. We don't know exactly how every day will work, but you do. We know that you've always been in charge of time and you always will be. We know that you know the past, the present, and the future. And you know all things that have happened, that are happening, and that will happen. And we just want to say, like David in the book of Psalms, that today, God, we trust you. Our time is in your hands. And we're so thankful that you are a good, 
great, awesome God who loves us, who cares for us, and is watching out for us. God, we pray this morning that you would give us an awesome new year. 2021! I can't believe it. It's almost here. Thank you, God, for watching over us. Thank you for giving us each new day as a blessing. And thank you so much for being with us today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad you guys were here for Kids Church. And I can think of no better way to close out a year and to look forward to a new year than singing a worship song to God. So get up on your feet and let's sing this song together. And I will see you next week. by my side, yeah, when I'm feeling lonely, and I start to worry, I know God you're near me, and you're always by my side, yeah, and I can lift my hands up to you, I can raise my voice and sing, are who I put all hope in I will trust you 